So now I think like, you know what? If I can get myself back on track and life can be this, all, like I feel so blessed. Life is treating me so well. How many people out there have that exact same potential if someone would really give them 100% and show them that it's possible? So I was working at a car dealership and then every single day I would offer to train anyone in Jiu Jitsu. And I already won multiple tournaments. I was competing kind of around the country. And I was doing my own thing. Like I was doing no gi at a time where like everybody was doing gi Jiu Jitsu. And I was this weirdo that I only wanted to learn Jiu Jitsu for combat. I didn't really care about Jiu Jitsu to, you know, just master Jiu Jitsu. I was like, I want to know if I'm in a fight. Like what do I do with Jiu Jitsu? Um, so yeah, I just became obsessed with it. I started offering to teach people for free. They knew about me, at least in the community. And it got to the point where like my neighbors thought I was a drug dealer because I would get home to my house and there'd be 20, 30 cars, the entire length of the road of people waiting to train Jiu Jitsu. And then um, I was like, man, maybe there's something here. And like Brian, the guy that I think you guys actually trained live with tonight, he was one of the people coming over to my house in the basement. And he's, he, you know, he said to me, uh, can I go do a tournament? Yeah, why not? Like I'm training you. I'm, the stuff I'm winning events with is what I'm teaching you. So go do it. And then all my, like a lot of my students started competing and they started doing extremely well. Um, you know, but I'm so involved as a coach and I am like working on these master plans that I've had to back burner myself so bad. And for me to give a thousand percent to all my students and all my endeavors, it is so hard to, because I would not want to fight just like, local shows with some kid on the come up and take him down and strangle him. It does nothing for me. I don't view myself that way. I have two losses in 20 fights. I lost to Kyler Phillips, who's ranked top 10 in the world now in the UFC. And I lost to a guy in a world title fight in Brazil after an eight man tournament. And Daniel Virginia, who trains with Jose Aldo. And I think he's still undefeated to this day. So I know where I should be if I'm competing. And anything less than that is almost like, I can't get myself up for it. I can't really get excited for it. I I do well with adversity, but to compete at that caliber, you can't be given 30% of what a real fighter is. So I don't know. I might do a couple more just for the dog in me, just for the fight, just for the like, you know, what? I got to, you know, jump. Maybe I'll jump on a card with a bunch of my fighters. Can you imagine I corner and wrap my fighters and then I go out there and fight? I might do that just for the fun of it. I'm only 34. I'm young. You know what I mean? I've been in the jujitsu 20 years, but, um, but we'll see, you know what I mean? That competition, like today I did a two hour training session. That's why this is, this is my face is bruised up because I have a guy that's fighting an 11 and one at an alpha male, main event pro title next weekend. Um, so him and I just went to war today. You know what I mean? So I'm still out there. I'm still with the guys, but it's, it's I juggle a lot now. And I try to be a family man. I'm, I'm, I'm you know, uh, we're considering, I'm considering having kids with my fiance and like, so it, there's a lot, but that spirit never leaves you. Training with James is next to, like, there's nothing you can really compare to it. I've been to a couple of other gyms. I won't say any names, but um, James is just, he's so easy to talk to and he's so helpful with everything. He doesn't, like, belittle you or make you feel like you're not doing it well, even if you're totally not. There are some times where I totally butcher things and he's like, oh no, just do it like this and corrects everything that I just did. It makes me feel good about it. And he's just always been there. He's always on top of things and always trying to do better and always trying to make you better. And he does that for everyone here. And it's, I don't know anybody that would do that. I don't know anybody that would go out of their way for everybody they can. And that's his number one thing. And I just think that's great. Man, what does he mean to me? I'll tell you. When I first started at the gym, and I remember this vividly, Coach James had us running sprints and we were carrying boxing, like big bags. And I was running with this bag. I didn't know who I was. I, I was just a kid who didn't know what he wanted to do in life. I, I didn't know if I wanted to wrestle. I didn't know if I wanted to play football. I didn't know anything. And I definitely didn't know anything about fighting. And I was running with this bag and all he saw was that I was trying hard. And he was yelling at me. He wasn't like encouraging me. He was just yelling at me. Let's go, let's go. You're slowing down, pick it up, pick it up. And so we finish and he goes, you can make money doing this someday. You're gonna make tons of money, your face is gonna be on TV, and you're gonna be a professional fighter. I was like, dude, what are you talking about? I'm about to throw up. And, and that's every time I'm ever with him. He tells us how great we are, but, but not to boost our egos so we believe in ourselves. I, that guy, 
does more for people than I think you know I could ever do, or anyone I know ever does. I mean, he, he he got you guys here. He he does everything for us. He sets up our fights. You know, when I had my third fight, it was in Pittsburgh, on super short notice, and he was cornering John Chalbeck in the uh, BKFC the night before in Mississippi, I think. He takes a plane from Mississippi at three in the morning to Pittsburgh just to come corner me and then flies back home. I'm an amateur fighter, right? People don't do that. He, he's the man, he means everything to me. But I'll tell you, like, when I walk in now, like, I have an incredible sense of pride and appreciate. Like, honestly, it's just appreciation, it's gratitude, it's thankfulness. Like, like I have nothing if people don't come here. I only have something because of the community and the fighters and the people that entrust me with their career and entrust me to guide them and be a good coach and a mentor and a friend. So, I mean, I have an overwhelming sense of gratitude, but on the scale of things, I still feel like I'm so far away from what I'm going to accomplish that uh, I'm just not, like, I'm so forward focused. You know, the reason I, I think I'll stick with James is, is it's, it's more than the fight game with him. And to be honest with you, my goals are not centered around the fight game. My goals are centered around my personal development and finding how great I can be in every aspect of life, not just the fight game. Uh, James looks to pull that out of everybody. He's not just here to coach us in fighting. He's, you know, if, if you're a good fighter, good for you. But if you're a scumbag in life, like he's, he's gonna try to pull the best out of you and, and you'll, you'll get the best out of him when you're the best version of yourself. So I always search for mentors or lessons or people that are successful and I try to break down why are they successful. So like I have a couple people in my life that are so far ahead of me in business and I regularly will meet them for coffee and I'll write things down and I'll, I'll try to like figure out how do I get to the next level in that and then I study the best coaches. I study the patterns that they're doing and not only the patterns they're doing, are their fighters winning? There's very few coaches out there I think that are really as involved as I am. Like I live and breathe this to the point where my fiance at, at some point is like, can you please, you gotta give me an hour. You know what I mean? But she, she loves how passionate I am and how obsessed I am. But I think I just study greatness. If, if I see greatness in anything, in leadership, in personal development, in culture, in, in fighters, I try to figure out why. I'll tell you a massive secret about my coaching. And I, if anyone came to me, a friend of mine, and said, how do I be that successful as a coach? I always try to understand why. I don't want to know how to do things. I don't, know, don't want to know what something is. I want to understand why. And if I can understand the why of something, the driving thing behind the information, that's where the magic really lies.